I would be like a different kind of pharmacist, okay? So I would do it differently, okay? So, so I would look like a pharmacist. I would wear the white coat, because without the white coat, you're just a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I wear the white coat, but under it, I would go to like a Renaissance fair. We have Renaissance fairs here? Yeah. Yes! Of course we do. Every state's got white trash. Of course we do. So I go to Renaissance fair, <laughs> and I would go to like the witch doctor's tent, and I would get one of those like medieval witch woman belts that has like some leather, and it's got bells, and raccoon pelts, and a, a jug for your ale, whatever, and it have like a jar of pigeon whispers. I'd have all these things, all the accoutrement of a creepy witch on my belt, and I put it under the coat so that when I walked, the coat would flare open, and you'd get glimpses of my medieval trickery under it, just and you'd be in line at the pharmacy and you'd be like, what's up with that one pharmacist? Is she into the dark arts? Is she a sorceress? Magic with a K? Does she play Skyrim alone? What is that? <laughs> and I wouldn't come up to the counter. Instead, instead of a bell that you ring, I would get, I would get a raven. I would stuff a raven. <laughs> and I would give it a beard. I'd glue on the beard. I would spend my time gluing the beard on and have beard, and I would sit on the perch. So when you came up, to the counter, you'd have to pull the beard, and then the raven will go, Aah. That's my cue to appear. So, and then I'd, yes? <laughs> Secretly, I was waiting under the counter to hear the raven, and then, yes? I was right there. There's no magic. I'm right there. Yes, my child. I call you my child, because that's what creepy people do. And you'd hand me your prescription, and I'd say, okay, uh, here, one moment. And I'd have a hump. Oh, yeah, I have a hump. <laughs> you gotta have a hump. If you're gonna be making medicine, you gotta have a hump. Because the hump says that you're serious. A hump is your calling card. A hump says, I'm not out partying. I'm not out getting drunk. I'm downstairs in the basement studying alchemy and, and witchery, and I'm learning how to turn newt thoughts into rat eyeballs. I'm doing things like that. I'm learning the proper use for an Erlenmeyer flask. I'm down there doing these things, okay? So I have the hump, and then and I'd say, take your, take your prescription. And one moment. And then, <laughs> I have a limp, too. <laughs> The limp comes with the hump, standard. <laughs> and then I would set to work making your mess. So I'd be back here and I would have my back to you and I'd, I'd have all these sound effects on like a keyboard ready. So you'd be standing there and you'd hear like, one moment. And I would also have a closed circuit TV right here so I could watch everything in the pharmacy, okay? So you would go to like touch something and I would see you on the TV and I would just say this, I wouldn't touch that if I were you. <laughs> I'm just watching you and I have it. And like an hour later, I'd emerge with your medicine in the orange bottle. Like I didn't make your shit, I had it ready to go. I was just wasting your time because a hump suggests that I'm making it, so I want you to follow that fantasy. I didn't, I don't know how to make medicine out of herbs. I'm not Chinese, so I have it. <laughs> and I'd come up to the counter and I'd say, and I'd set it down and I'd say, would you like a consultation? <laughs> and you'd say, sure, and I'd say, okay. And I'd hold up your pill to the light. I shouldn't touch your medicine, but I'm going to. I'd hold it up and I'd say, take one! and I'd have all the other pharmacists flip the lights on and off to make it. <laughs> and they'd put lighters up to the sprinklers and we'd get one of the fog machines left over from our Halloween sale and, and it would fill the room and we'd have people wafting it with car mats just to make it go in some sort of circle. Take one on the seventh solstice of the third vernal equinox. It's two different times a year, but it's just a bit. Take one in the presence <laughs> Presence of a righteous man with the blood of a virgin, also with crackers, so you don't upset your tummy. Popular misconception about girls is that we don't like to eat. Girls love to eat. Yeah. We just don't like to eat in front of a guy that we like. That's the difference. When you first meet a guy that you like, you can't eat the way you want to on a date. You can't. You can't have that fourth plate of ribs on a date. I found out. <laughs> Going on a date, society dictates that guys can do what they want, women have to be dainty. So he's gonna get fries, a burger, half a gazelle, whatever he wants to eat. 
girls, you get the menu, what are you ordering? Salad. <laughs> like hot little robot salad. <laughs> and it's an excruciating experience because you're trying to just look pretty the whole time. He's sitting there enjoying his burger. You're eating your lettuce. You're just sitting there like, Argh. You've abandoned the utensils. You ordered like a koala. You may as well eat like one. You're just like, Argh. He's talking, you can't focus because you're starving, right? He's yabbing, you're just like, Argh. you finished your lettuce, there's no more watercress on the plate. You're just like, Argh. you pull one, you're looking at his food, you're like, what's that over there? Fry! <laughs> talking, talking, you can't focus. You can't focus, you're not getting any nutrients to your brain. You're just kind of staring out the window, wondering what birds taste like. <laughs> you finished your lemon wedge like an hour ago. He's still eating, he's still talking, and you're, you're starting to get cold now. You're not getting any nutrition into your bloodstream. Your spine is sticking out, you're shivering. You start, you're like a lost puppy. You start saying things that you don't mean. He's yapping, you start just saying things like, I would love to spend the afternoon with your mother. That sounds great. And no, I totally cared about that whole replacement refs thing. It really rocked my world as well. <laughs> Once you're in a relationship, you can eat the way you want to. Once he loves you, you can roll out a trough at mealtime. It doesn't matter. You can put your hands behind your back, county fair pie eating contest style. <laughs> oh, I love you. Is that the house cat? <laughs> yeah, you can let it all hang out when he loves you. Then you can show him how you eat. Once you're in love, you can show him the 12 foot man eating lizard you actually are. <laughs> Your eyes light up red. Let's get cheesecake. <laughs> oh, cool, sweetheart. You want to share a piece of cheesecake? Uh uh. <laughs> Tail swipe. <laughs> get your own. <laughs> All right, sweetheart, dinner's over. Did you get enough to eat? I love when they ask that, because I've always wanted to give this answer. Did you get enough to eat? <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Why, what else do you want? Your soul! <laughs> Fire! Can I ask you, can I ask you a question? Does this tail make my butt look big? 